we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we go any further, I'd like to explain why Horlicks malted milk is so universally recommended as a food for growing children. For one thing, Horlicks is rich in calcium and phosphorus and the other minerals essential for the building of strong bones and sound, healthy teeth. That's one reason why so many medical and child-feeding authorities say that Horlicks should be a part of every youngster's diet. Then again, Horlicks is a fine source of vitamins. Vitamins that build husky bodies. Vitamins that help set up a resistance to infection. And, last but not least, Horlicks is especially easy to digest. The young, delicate digestive system can handle Horlicks so much easier than ordinary milk. Get some Horlicks for those youngsters of yours. You can't do anything better for them. Your druggist has it, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. Children like them both. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner learned yesterday that Grandpappy Spears was responsible for getting their money back from Squire Skimp on the fake diamond deal. And they've given the old fellow a permanent position in their jot em down store as a reward. <laughs> yesterday, Lum received a strange letter from Denver, Colorado. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the jot em down store explaining it to Lum. Listen. Why, no, that's uh, what they call a chain letter, Lum. I've been reading about them in the paper, but that's the first one I've seen. Chain letter? Yeah, it just keeps going on and on like an endless chain. Well, it's done got here, though. Can't go no further now. Well, uh, you're supposed to make copies of this letter and send them to five of your friends. And then they'll send them to their friends, and they'll send them to their friends, and keep on and on till eventually, why... You ought to get 15,625 answers back, according to this here. You mean if I just send out five of them, I'll get over 15,000 answers for me? Well, that's the idea of it, if nobody breaks the chain, you will. And every one of them's supposed to have a dime in them, huh? Yeah, well, they're supposed to. If they all sent in, why, you'd get to uh, $1,562.50. And, and all it cost me is just 10 cents, huh? Yeah, yeah, all you're supposed to do is just send a dime to the name on the top of that list. Hey, Granny, that looks like a good proposition to me. I'm going to get busy on that. I'll send you one of the letters, Dick, so you can get rich, too. <laughs> no, no, don't send me one. <laughs> I don't believe I want to get mixed up in the lump. Well, why not? Granny, just cost you a dime, and you make over $1,500 out of it. Well, you send them to somebody else, Lum. It sounds good and all that, but I've always figured a man's got to work for what he gets. These get-rich-quick schemes look awful good on paper, but they never pan out right. <laughs> Nobody's going to give you nothing, though. Well, if you don't want in on it, I won't send you one. See, I'll send one to Abner. I want to help him if I can. Let's see, Grandpappy Spears and Moe's Moose down to the barber shop. He'll be a good one. Yeah, yeah Moe's will take a chance on anything. <laughs> well, he ought to. Folks take a chance when they go in that barber shop of his, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, especially if he gets to talking, don't pay any attention to what he's doing. Yeah, I got a shave down there the other day, and my face has been burning like fire ever since. <laughs> well, I won't let him shave me anymore, huh? Stop. Well, I never aim to let him shave me, neither, I... Just sitting there in the barber chair, listening to the Macmillan boys play the mouth organ guitar, and just dropped off to sleep. And when I woke up, he had me shaved and charged me ten cents for it. <laughs> It'll give me a chance to get that dime back off of it. Well, I don't see how in the world that you ever slept through him giving me a shave, Lum. Well, I don't either. He must have chloroformed me to do it, I think. <laughs> well, a fellow needs an anesthetic all right when he shaves. <laughs> Felt like somebody had took and beat my whiskers off with a wet rope. Well, I don't mind the razor as much as I do those hot towels he puts on your face. They're hot enough to scald a hole. Yeah, he can't hold them in his hand. They're so hot. He's got to drop them somewhere, so he just throws them over your face to get shut up, I think. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, let's see now. Abner and Grandpap and Moe's. Leave our friend Doc Miller one. That's four. Uh, how about Uncle Henry Lumsford or Ezra Seastone? Well, I don't know. It says to be sure whoever you send them to will send them on to somebody else. Caleb Weehunt, I believe, would take a chance on this. Yeah, time. yeah, Caleb be a good one. Yeah. Well, that gets five of them right there. That's going to be right smart of a job to write all the... We ain't got a typewriter neither, I granny. I'm a notion to get Evelina to send them out for me. 
I'll tell you what I can do. Let's see. She ought to be home from school by this time. Yeah, what do you think can do there, Lon? Well, I just had an idea here. <laughs> I'm going to call her up. Well, uh, I expect I better be going, Lum. I've got to get back to the store. Well, don't rush off, Dick. Well, I'll see you later. Let me know how I come out on those letters. Yeah, I will, Dick. So long. I mean, hello. I'll see you later. No, wait a minute. Hello. I was just hollering at the fella leaving the store here. Who is this, Sister Simpson? Uh, let me speak to Evelina, please, Mom. Well, this time I need no deal over here. Well, I'll just drop this for a minute. Well, I'm sorry I missed you. Come back again. Yeah, I will. Go ahead. Hello? Oh, hello, Lum. How are you, Evelina? Well, all right, I reckon. Huh? Who'd you call me? I ain't talking to you, Abner. I'm talking to Evelina over the telephone here. Oh, oh excuse me. <laughs> I, I never noticed you talking at the phone. Oh, I was just talking to Abner. Uh, oh. Evelina, what I called you up about, I, I've got to make five copies of a letter. Uh, I just wondered if you couldn't get some of the scholars down at school, school to write them for me. Well, you know, when you keep them in after school, you generally make them write some word or something 500 times, something like that. I just wondered if you couldn't make them copy this letter for me, as long as they've got to write something anyway. Oh, it's just a letter. I'll, I'll bring it over when I come over tonight. All right. <laughs> All right, much obliged to you. That'll be fine. Well, I'll see you tonight, then. All right. All right, Evelina. Goodbye. Granny, that'll be a save in the time. What's that, Mom? Well, I've got to make five copies of this letter. i got just you, so Evelina's going to have the young'uns down there at school do it for me. You mean the letter you got from your Uncle Lige out there in Denver, Colorado? Well, yeah, but that ain't from my Uncle, though. Dick says that's a chain letter. Uh-huh. Uh, that is a what? A chain letter. All I got to do is send that feller on top a dime, and I get $1,562.50 back. You mean he'll send you that much money for just a dime? Well, yes. Well, order me a dime's worth two, then, while you're at it, Lon. Well, he don't exactly send it to you, Abner. See, the way this thing works, I've got to make five copies of this letter and send them to five of my friends, and each one of them does the same thing that I'm doing. Uh-huh. They send the top name on this list, dime, and then put their name on at the bottom of the list. And when their name gets to the top of the list, why, well, they're supposed to get 15,625 letters, and each one's supposed to have a dime in it. Well, I do know. Well, uh, does it make any difference who you send them to? No, no, no. Send them to anybody you want to. They don't care who you send them to. I'm going to send you one. That shows right there it don't make no difference. Then you can send them to five of your friends. And a feller's supposed to make over $1,500 out of it, huh? That's what the letter said. Well, <laughs> I don't it. I believe I'll just send all five of mine to myself, then. To yourself? Why, yeah. If I can make $1,500 off of one, well, I'll make five times that much that way if I send them all to myself. Then you wait a minute here. I hadn't thought about that. Why, sure. Well, I don't know where I want to send them out to somebody else or not. Hey, well, now, here now, love, you've got to send me one. You've done said that you would now. Well, I'll send you one, but you've got to send me one back. That'll make us even again. Yeah, well, I'll do that. Yes, sir, I'd love to get in on that thing. <laughs> Doggy, that's the easiest money I ever hear now. <laughs> of course, you've got to wait till your name gets to the top of the list before you start getting back any money, though. Well, I'll just put my name up there to start with. Put it on top instead of the bottom end. Well, now, wait a minute here. We're getting ourselves sort of mixed up here. Yeah. I don't believe that'll work. I'm feared we'd be sending ourselves $1,500 that way. Well, I couldn't send myself that much, but I ain't got it. Let me see now. Of course, I could owe myself part of it, I reckon. But that wouldn't do no good. I don't believe I'd ever pay it. I don't pay myself that good. Well, Abner, this thing's got me all mixed up, but I believe the best thing for us to do, just go ahead and send them out to our friends like the letter says. No use to make hogs out of ourselves. Hogs? Yeah, we ought to be satisfied with $1,500 for just a dime in there. Yeah, I know. I just thinking, old um, I believe you give me an idea then. Give you an idea? Why, well, yeah. If folks around here are sort of short on money, Lum, but they've all got more hogs than they know what to do with. Well, yeah. Well, why don't we start one of these here chain letter businesses and instead of sending a dime, send them a hog? Then hogs? Yes, sir. We, we could get that many hogs back to the dimes that way. Granny, wait a minute here. 
Now you have thought of something. I sure. <laughs> you know how many hogs we'd get out of that? Fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty-five. For the <laughs> land sake. And they order average up, uh, razorbacks and all. They order to bring three dollars a piece. Oh, they order that. That'd be forty-five thousand dollars worth of hogs. Forty-five thousand. Yeah, hand me that letter there. Uh, uh, Granny's me and you starting a hog chain letter right now. See that? That ain't gonna be no bother to change that where it says. Uh, rop one dime and a piece of paper and send it. We'll just change that to rop one hog. Well, we won't rop him up, but just send a hog. Yeah, yeah that'll help everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, every man, woman, and child in the United States will have 15,625 hogs apiece. Well, now, <laughs> wait a minute, now. Where in the world will they all come from now? I, I never know there was that many hogs. Well, I don't know about that. They just have to get them somewhere. All they got to do is just send one hog. They ought to be able to find just one. Oh, yeah. That's what I say. That'll run the price up on hogs. The farmer will get more for his hogs. And the railroad company will get to ship them all over the country. And feed prices will go up. Hey, Granny's, talk about farm relief. Hey, Granny, this is it. <laughs> well, maybe a great idea, but we just hope we don't get one of those chain letters. 15,625 is a lot of hogs. Well, it's afternoon recess period at the Byford Grade School. Two teachers are talking. Listen. Thank goodness, Sam. Only one hour more. What's the matter, Mary? Tired? No, I'm all right. I'm so hungry, though. Nearly starved. Well, didn't you have any lunch? Sure. But I always get hungry around this time of day, don't you? I used to. Used to. <laughs> what do you do? Eat more lunch now? <laughs> at my weight? Not I. <laughs> What's the secret, then? Just a minute. I'll show you. Hmm, what is it? Here we are. These Havocs. Have a couple. Candy, eh? No, thanks. It isn't candy, Mary. It's Horlicks. Horlicks molded milk? Yes, in tablet form. Say, they're kind of handy. Mm, I'll say they are. Solve my hunger problems anyway. Well, won't they spoil my dinner, though? Not a bit. I soon found that out. But aren't they expensive, Anne? No, they aren't. Why, this whole flask here only cost a dime. Honest? Well, I surely am going to get a flask myself, Anne. This getting hungry every day really is a nuisance. And that's a typical conversation, folks, about Horlick's malted milk tablets. People everywhere are finding these tablets especially useful for giving new energy and freshness when you're tired. They are the most satisfactory lunch on record. They save you health, time, and money. You can get these tablets at your druggist's in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley. Bid you all good night and good health.